All right then. So, I thought I'd start this one with this as my opening. It's my PS4 dashboard because this shit needs to be seen to be believed. Now, for those of you who don't know, I don't know what it's like on Xbox One. You've got these little pictures here, right? To uh, to showcase your products on the dashboard. And this is Last Guardian, a Sony published game. And that's Corridor Z, an indie game. And they all have some official looking artwork, right? Obviously, we've got Far Cry 5 and GTA 5, two games with a lot of money put behind them. And finally, Elder Scrolls Online. And then we got this. The Unknown City, Episode 1. Which has a really shitty screenshot of the game as its, uh, as its picture. And, uh, I've been warned about this game, but I wasn't expecting that. Well, at least we're starting as we mean to go on. Oh, Christ. Look at that zombie. And the blood splatter is on the ground, but it's also on the zombie. Fuck. Right, okay. I'm not sure how many people are aware of this, but most digital distribution services have recently said fuck it in regards to quality control. Over the past five years, in fact, this has been the case. Steam was the first to do this, having around 10,000 games on its store, most of which have been uploaded within the last three to five years, over its 10-year lifespan, and the vast majority of Steam games now look like... Well, this. Smack that booty. That's wrong in so many ways. You're yeah, just jealous. Ah, oh, there's all the weapons. The PlayStation Store has also been pulling similar bollocks by offering baffling titles like The Life of Black Tiger, a mobile port with terrible English subtitles telling its frankly ridiculous story, and physics that make Gmod 9 look like real life. I've mostly been avoiding these games. This is due to them not being available in Europe. They've actually managed to avoid the European PSN store entirely. And I was honestly naive enough to believe that this was because the PSN Euro store was the last bastion of hope for quality control in the living room. However, the Unknown City is available, so what the fuck did I know? So we're introduced to a brilliant enlargement of the dashboard icon. Which is the wrong fucking resolution by the way. And it depicts a group of zombies working together that clearly do not belong in the same universe. We got this soggy mob flip zombie that looks like he's from some sort of TF2 Fortnite or some other stylized game. We have these two realistic zombies from the likes of Killing Floor and State of Decay and other grungy looking horror survival games. And finally we have this big motherfucker who is wearing some sort of knight's belt and greaves. As if he wandered out of a dungeon from Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion. I might also point out that these guys are the usual suspects in any zombie game on Steam. In fact, I've played a game pretty damn recently that I've done a let's play of on this channel and I'm considering doing an episode of later this year. The game is called Invention, in which all of the zombies in this game feature in one way or another. This gem of a game is brought to us by YFT Studios, the people who also brought us Horse Racing 2016 in 2017, which was another god-awful Android port brought to the PS4. It's a game that looks worse and plays worse than G1 Jockey, a game that was a PS2 launch title for fuck's sake. Apparently, they do have three years Unity Engine experience. <laughs> Three fucking years, eh? You know, when you've made something like Unknown City, that doesn't mean fuck all. They also have a website, which, uh, 
is actually just an upgraded Blogspot account. It's upgraded to look a bit more like a website, but they didn't really try. Don't get me wrong, I'm not criticising the concept of making a website on Blogspot. You can do it if you put quite a bit of work into a Blogspot blog and turn it into a functioning website, or blog site as I used to dub them. I made a few in college. It's a rather cheap and easy way to make a website, and if you put enough effort into it, it actually looks like a real website. Don't look like a great website, but it looks like something that could exist as a website. It could look like that, but they didn't really try. They're apparently an Indian company, as many things like their Google Play Store lists their Indian branch, and even their English branches require you to know both English and Hindi in order to work on their games. Oh, by the way, if you want to work for them, they're accepting voice actors and the like. And you too could be part of a project like this and possibly get paid for the privilege. Oh, and after doing some research, and by that I mean I accidentally stumbled upon this whilst buying one of their games, I discovered that YFT stands for Yash Future Tech, which is actually seldom used on anything, whether it's their Facebook or their app stores. It's almost like they don't want people to know that, like they're secretly an evil organization, I don't know. Anyway, in this game we're unceremoniously dumped with a fitting dunk sound, and we end up on the title screen. You'll notice that in the background they're showing off the environment, and well, this wouldn't be a bad concept if the environment didn't look like shit. Not to mention either that they do this for all their games, it's like they're bog standard, so... Anyway, enough about bloody menus, let's start the game. So the game starts off with a static car driving down a nondescript road under a bunch of street lights in which the lighting effects aren't done properly, and so a little strobe of light is hovering next to the light. I think they're all cousins of that one from the toy room. Anyway, you might also notice that the white glow on the floor isn't actually on the floor, it's floating just above it like a ghostly fog. Oh, we're off to a fantastic fucking start. So yes, this game has literally done everything wrong already. Oh, and I almost missed it, but horror begins now? That's actually pretty appropriate. This is just the beginning of what we're going to have to be dealing with. We then get a conversation between Kelly and John, who are voiced by Microsoft Anna and Microsoft Sam, respectively. We are not lost. I know exactly where I am here. Fans of Dragon Age 2 may recognise Microsoft Anna as she stands in for Sebastian during his fight scenes. Protect Hawk. That looked bad. Of course, we can't really hear the dialogue because the sound editor, assuming that there is a sound guy and that it's not just the same guy doing everything, which I actually think is the most likely scenario here. Anyway, he has decided that the ambient cricket sounds are way more important and has drowned out the dialogue with them. To be honest though, I do think he has a point, they are more important. So these two bicker about how they are and aren't lost, something about a policeman's ball. I have no idea as I was too busy watching the floating lighting effects pass me by. Honestly, three minutes in and I already declared this as the Manos Hands of Fate of video games. Because it's so badly put together and so ploddingly slow and awful that it can't be compared to anything else. Then we get more fucking boring driving.
Then something exciting happens. The sirens come on and there's some excellent foreshadowing as to what we can expect later. I didn't touch anything. This stuff is happening on its own. So the sirens constantly blare and the game forces us to endure it for the best part of two minutes, which might seem like a short amount of time, but listening to a police siren very loudly for two minutes is akin to nails on a chalkboard for two hours. It grates very fucking quickly. Due to the lack of motion on this thing, I honestly got worried that the game had crashed a few times during this cutscene. I mean, would it surprise you if it had? So, the car breaks down due to bad weather. I have no idea. I think this has happened due to bad weather. Mate, there isn't even weather of any variety there. What you talking about? I doubt they could even afford a precipitation pack from the Unity Asset Store to rain on your sorry ass. Honestly, this cutscene is torture. It makes you listen to this siren. None bloody stop for the best part of two minutes, whilst doing nothing and staring at even less than nothing. Fuck! Anyway, we thankfully get out of this hellish purgatory. We are also treated to that gem of a line and absolutely delightful delivery. It actually took me a second to realise that I wasn't in cutscene anymore. It took me by complete surprise as I thought it was just a changing camera angle for a moment. Anyway, I walk up to Kelly whilst following her, only to realise that touching her causes you to bounce off and go flying across the map. <laughs> Looks like it. Can I like crouch? Oh, this is where we follow the character. Serious wharf moment. Well, they should get that window fixed. It looks like a flat, textureless piece of garbage. You might just notice at this point in the video that the screen is tearing. Something fierce as well, I might add. And due to me having an Elgato and this possibly happening in a few other videos, you might think that this is down to my setup. But no, this is actually how the game presents itself. The screen tears in the actual game. Magical, fucking magical. Can't look because I got bounced off. I don't see any human life at all, and that includes us. Am I drunk? Whoa! Am I, I, I think my character is drunk because he just sort of stumbles around. <laughs> That's probably something else that I should mention. John the Copper must be drinking on duty or must have some sort of MS or something because it's like he's permanently fucking smashed. Honestly, I walk better than this wearing beer goggles for fuck's sake. You can also fly depending on what you jump off of or what you touch, which is odd. The graphics in this game are awful. I mean, I actually had to get a better look at a bench to tell that it was even a bench because of how shitty everything looks. What's this, a bench? I actually had to look at it properly to tell it was a bench. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, oh, I actually could go inside there. I like how these fire escapes are too short so you can't even go up them. This level design is... Is anybody there? Hello. Ah! Stop pushing me! I'm getting a bad vibe about this game. Whoa! Rocket man! Oh shit. Right. Enough of this. What's he got in his house? Some sort of obelisk? Is he a Satan worshipper? Don't push me! We're walking in the air. The developers didn't care. It's at this point that we reach our zombie reveal scene. 
You know the one I mean, that bit in the films where they usually think that the obvious zombie isn't a zombie because they've never seen a zombie before. Like, for example, in Resident Evil, where we have the iconic scene of the old decayed grey man slowly turning his head to reveal his zombie features. That chilling moment where you see the head of his prey fall to the floor and the sickening wet crunch of his neck snapping. And then the creature slowly looks around, showing you its flaky, flesh-rotten face and seeing nothing but prey in its milky grey eye. Well, thankfully, it's been 20 whole years of technological evolution since then. So, in 2018, we have this scene. Hello, officer. Our car has broken down, and we need some help. Officer, are you alright? We need your assistance, officer. What are you doing? Why are you standing in a corner like that? Help. Help. I mean, not only is it piss poorly lit to the point that the creature isn't even obscured in the slightest, nor is there any tension in the scene itself due to the lack of direction, and not only does it just dump you back in the game with a gun inexplicably magicked into your hands, but it's also completely broken because you can just walk away from it and then encounter five or more impressive zombies outside instead of this wanker cop that doesn't even do anything. My favourite part about this moment is the fact that you can actually kill all of the zombies outside, or most of the zombies outside, before killing the cop. And then it continues the scene, whilst you're being attacked by other zombies. Brilliant. Fucking brilliant. And now, to show you my entire thought process as I in countered this truly masterfully executed scene for the first time. Oh, that normal looking officer seems to be ignoring us. Maybe we should approach him. He's trying to get that nightstick from out of his buttock. Oh, 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 where did the door go? What? Oh, hello. I got a gun now, so I don't need you anymore, officer. Bye bye. Oh, what? Ah! What's happening? What? <laughs> What's happening? I'm scared. <laughs> Not in the way that I'm supposed to be. I mean, like. <laughs> oh, why is reload? <clears throat> What's bouncing off of them? Black bits have fallen off. I'm gonna put that as the description of the video. Black bits have fallen off. <laughs> Look at its legs. <laughs> Look, there's no Sferatu. Why has that guy got a katana ram through him? Like a crowbar would make sense, but why a katana? Where did they get a katana from? Help, I'm too stupid to shoot properly. Oh, not the car alarm. If I have to take death by zombies or death by annoyance from car alarm, I'm going for the zombies. What happened to that cop? Oh god, I mean, I've got seen. And there's a zombie. <laughs> help me, please help me. <laughs> I would prefer if I did not die. So, I defeat the zombies and it's the perfect opportunity to talk about the controls. Which, to be diplomatic about it, they're utterly fucking awful. 
Everything about the control is so janky and awkward that I can't even fathom how anyone thought that it was acceptable. I move the analog stick a bit and suddenly I've gone 90 fucking degrees. The buttons are in some fucking weird places. R1 is reload. I can't even remember what bizarre button fucking weapon chart is, which is different from weapon select of course, and you'll never guess what button pause is. Circle. It's the circle button. And it's not like MGS2 where there's a pause button that's the triangle, but it's actually not a pause button, it's an options menu, and pause is start, and codec is select, so it couldn't have been either of those. So it makes some semblance of sense, not to mention that triangle is kind of out of your way. But no, it's circle for the pause menu. Start and the pad do nothing while circle is the pause menu. Game design.